What's up folks, it's your boy DT 2.0 and today we have a laptop I've been waiting a long time for. You know when Alienware and other companies might have added started putting this year's graphic cards in last year's model just to get some dollars out of you early in the year. And if you want to reference that, see the Alienware M15 R3 and the Alienware M15 R4, R5, and R6. And I get it, I said it in my unboxing. Oh. Trying to get one of these is like trying to get a PS5 or an Xbox Series X. But at least Alienware lets you order it though, Sony. Anyway, we have the Alienware X15 R1 and I'm gonna let you know exactly what I feel about it. And y'all probably not gonna like it. So if you get mad, get your capes cause you are about to get super mad. I'm just playing, or am I? Cause even though I'm a fan of Alienware, I'm not gonna swing on the dongles of no company trying to get a book. Uh-uh, not today which is probably why I'll never get a early review unit or a sponsorship. Well, who cares? Let's get it. Now, before we get into the main review, let's go over the specs. This thing supports the Intel Core i7 11800H, 16 gigabytes of RAM, a 512 gigabyte SSD, the RTX 3070 Max-Q, with 110 watts of max power, a 15.6 inch, 360 hertz full HD display, Comfort View Plus, NVIDIA G-Sync, and Advanced Optimus. This is all of the same, or pretty much the same screen that they had on the M15 R5, and I was a big fan of that. The camera up top is 1080p, might I add, and pretty good compared to other laptops I've had in here. It is IR, so it is Windows compatible, and no shocker here because this thing is thin and light, no more Toby at the bottom. A per key RGB keyboard, and I'll speak on this later, big fan of Alienware's keyboard. 3D audio made by Nahemic, which is the same company that uh, did MSI's uh, sound, uh, 3D sound in their laptops. Uh, new cooling, a new design, and pretty much what this thing should have been months ago when they started putting the 30 series cards uh, in last year's models, just to make a book but in these with next generation's processors. And I get it, COVID. We're gonna blame that on everything. Total price was $2,400. So it's not bad, but did it perform up to that price? That's what we'll find out. So let's do a quick roundabout. On the left side, we have your, head, uh, your power input right there. In the back, you have a USB-A port you have a USB-C port that's power delivery and a Thunderball port. You have a micro SD card slot right there and another USB-C port that's also doubles as your display port and could actually have power delivery also. And then your HDMI output, which is HDMI 2.1. So that's a good thing. On the right side, you have your microphone headphone combo jack and that is it. Vince on each side and vents on the bottom and that iconic would spin that iconic honeycomb uh, shape back there. They just changed it up a little bit. I think last year or last model uh, for the last few years, they had them going across, but now they're going or horizontal, now they're going vertical. These, these, uh, these grills on the side, I assume are for speakers because the speakers are about right here. Anyway, overall, I like the construction. It's thinner. It's lighter by about a half a pound. And uh, let's just see if it'll perform while it's thinner, light, thinner, thinner and lighter. As you can see, a big difference when comparing the R3 and R4 is this back um, hinge in the back is now white instead of black. And also in the inside, of course, the deck itself is black, which I called for last year on the Luna, Mite, Luna, Luna, Mite, Luna White models to, for this deck to be black or at least the keys to be black if they wanted to keep it. But now you don't have to worry about staining here in the inside uh, of, your, of, your, uh, of your deck uh, from your palms being here or for gaming for uh, extended periods of time because now it's all black. It is not a rubber coating. So it does feel like plastic, but doesn't seem like it scratches easily either. So that's a good thing. Moving on. Now y'all know the routine, this is a consumer review. So if you're looking for an in-depth technical review, this ain't happening here. I'm just giving you the perspective or opinion of the consumer, me, 
who may or may not be experienced with dealing with computers when all you want to know is, hey, when I get this mug home, is it going to work like I need it to? With that, I'll give you my likes, my dislikes, the performance, my concerns, and overall my recommendation. Is this thing a keeper or do I need to send it back? Let's find out. Like number one, new build and the quality of that new build. I said it in my unboxing. I love the way the X15 is constructed. Compared to the M15 and M17, if you get the 17 inch version of this, it's slimmer, it's lighter, it just feels better. Holding this feels like it was constructed like a MacBook or a razor where it just feels like it was constructed from a solid piece of metal, especially when it's closed. I like the way that they didn't change the design too much. It still has that iconic Alienware design, still has that junk in the trunk in the back. They kept the overall design the same that shared with the M line, M15 and M17, uh, and in the Area 51, which I think is probably done by now because they haven't said anything about it in a minute. But anyway, um, at the same time, they made a few changes to slim it up a little bit. When you hold this thing, it just feels good. It takes less space in my bag and has less weight than the last model. What more could I ask for? It's a nice little slab we got here, pretty much. That's what she said, right? I'm just playing. Like number two, the display. Yes, it's only 1080p, but I've seen worse, and Alienware's implementation is spot on for a 15.6 inch display. The 360 hertz, I think I dubbed it, uh, uh, I can't believe it's not butter smooth, it's buttery smooth. I said the same thing about the M15 R5, which is the same display, and I like them both. The bezels overall could be a little th thinner or slimmer like the ASUS did with the G15 and G16 I had in here. Uh, I think they could have put a little bit more work in there, in this, to make them a little bit more smaller, or I don't know, just make the damn screen bigger. But it is what it is. The screen brightness overall is not eyeball burning bright, like on the QHD model, which has up to 400 or 500 nits. Uh, but this one is about average. It's not as dim as, say, uh, a razor blade, any other razor blades that I've had in here. So I'd say the brightness is a little bit above average as specified with about 300 to 500 nits. So I can't complain about that. Backlight bleed is minimum, but we know that varies from unit to unit. In the past, I've seen some, especially in the M line, that looked like I needed to call 911 because bleeding was everywhere. Check my son's computer. But this one just has a couple of spots at the bottom. So I call that acceptable. So good job on the display, Alienware, or at least on this one. Next light, the keyboard. It's no secret that I've been a longtime fan of Alienware's keyboard. They upgraded it sort of, kind of, or gave you a path to upgrade with the Cherry MX keyboard. And even though that one felt good, it just got annoying after a while. It was just too clicky for my taste for the long-term use, too loud, especially when I was typing on reviews. It just, ugh, like I was typing on the typewriter. This one is exactly the same as the one that was in the M line or the earlier M line, and I'm still a fan. The keys feel great. The key travel is great. It's quiet compared to the Cherry MX keyboard. I like the way they moved the volume up and down keys over on the side. They added the uh, mic mute and uh, the sound mute, which ASUS did with their G line, but they didn't have the sound mute, so this one does, which I felt it was odd that, that uh, ASUS would do that um, because now you still have to have press function and another fun or press a function key just to mute the key, just to mute the sound, which was odd. Anyway, you do have function shortcut keys up here. Um, they have some F2 through F6 is labeled A through E, so these are assignable. You do have a shortcut function to turn on uh, full full mode, and those are the fans. I'll let you hear those later. I'll turn those off right now. The lighting is bright and evenly spread with little to no leakage. Big fan of that, big fan of that. I think um, Razer is the only other company um, that does that, that takes, I wanna say, takes a little bit of pride in their lighting, right? No bleeding around the keys, ju almost just the letters um, shining through and it may look a little bit dim right now I do have them red but that's because I got lights in here shining but overall just a great keyboard now the trackpad I think on some models I called it a trash pad this one is an actual trackpad it seems better and when I say seems better 
That's a pun because there's no seams in this trackpad. Probably terrible. That was terrible. Anyway, the size is not as big as I like with all of this, this space left, um, but it's still built great. It's smooth, no gaps, no creaking, responsive. It basically does what it's supposed to do uh, that some companies just can't get right because to them, it's a, I think it's an afterthought, right? They automatically think that you're not going to even complain about the trackpad because you'll have your gaming mouse and won't even use it. But I do use it sometimes. Um, but I like the way they changed it to make it better. I've seen on YouTube some reviews of the newer or the new S XPS line where the trackpad, trackpads are trash pads. So it's good that Alienware actually didn't just throw that trackpad into this one and tried to call it premium. They actually put work in here and it shows. Um, overall, the keyboard and the trackpad or the deck itself is A1 in my book. One other thing to note about the deck itself is uh, this button, this Alienware head button is a little bit smaller and there was a small change up here where it was like solid, what felt like rubber but was plastic on the R or the M line, but now it's just one big grill right here, which is needed because this thing gets hot and we'll talk about that later. And my final like, the speakers. They're about as loud as the M15 line, except the M15 R5 because those were trash, but maybe even a little bit louder. Don't even think about the low end, but they do do a good job of reaching for it. And I say reaching for it, like you know the bass is there, you can hear a little bump, like a pluck, <laughs> but you're not gonna hear no bass in them. But what do you expect out of a laptop, right? You won't be disappointed. You won't be disappointed with these speakers, as I've said before. They are loud enough to compete with the fan noise, because everybody knows Alienware fans are pretty much the loudest in the business. And I'll speak on that in a few. So that's a definite plus. They do have speaker grills on the bottom, and when compared to the M15 R3 and R4, they had some speaker grills pointed forward right here in the front. But this one does not have that only and I'm breaking this thing already only the speaker grills at the bottom so uh, right, right there at the bottom so it is what it is let's not break this thing because I might not keep it anyway um, overall the speakers do, do what they're supposed to do and they're not bad at it so while I'm at it let's take a quick listen And I'm gonna talk over this so I don't get a copyright hit or anything like that, but I'm not using the music, I'm only using the volume of the music. All right, so as you can hear, could have a little bit more in the high pitch or the highs, and a little bit low on the low, but again, they're acceptable, but if this is a premium computer, why not put premium speakers in here? And one other mentionable, and it's not part of the computer, is that even though they didn't include an ethernet jack on the machine itself with all of that damn space back there, um, they did include an adapter, so thanks to Alienware for thinking about us little people. I think next time you should also include a display port adapter or Give me the display board adapter in place of that. And I don't think I'm being greedy because at this price, I want all what I paid for. Call me greedy. Now on to the unfortunates. Dislike number one, and y'all can call me a nitpicker. I don't care. Don't care. Power input location. Why did y'all move it to the side with all of that space in the back? Even if I did like that it's on the side, which I don't, why did you not give me, hold up, an angled cable? You gave me a straight cable. Look, that completely takes away from a neat and professional looking setup, no matter how much I manage the cable. Look at this. Still gonna have this stick sticking out the side like I got a dongle sitting there, even if I ran it to the back or to the front or under it. Only if I had a hole literally right here in my desk would it be neat. No, no, that's just ain't gonna get it. There's plenty of space in the back, and I'm gonna speak on this, that soon, uh, to put it back there where it was before. The entire reason I even accepted the junk in the trunk in the first place 
was because most of the ports are housed in the back, including the power jack. <sighs> I'm not an engineer, so I can complain about it, but I just don't understand the logic behind that, especially when it was back there before. And I really don't. So Alienware, if you're listening, or you're looking, or watching, even though you're probably not, answer my question, why? Dislike number two, port selection, or lack of. Where the hell are they? Let's pull this out. <laughs> Where are they? Where are they now? Like the, <laughs> like, uh, like the movies or the show, Where Are They Now? Well, look, they got the, the ones on the side, they're gone and moved to the back. But that's all they did. <laughs> really? Now we have one less USB-A port that my Alienware mouse might take up, and that's about it. If this was an upgraded model to an expensive line, why didn't you add ports to the back? Look at all of this space here and here. Got a little gap here. And then it's kind of, it's not even, there's no method to the madness. Could you put them straight or like my OCD is going into overdrive right now. Look at that. Ew. Like, come on, man, line them up straight or put, put the same ports next to each other. <sighs> wait a minute, wait, I'm, I'm getting sweaty. Okay, I'm ready. I, I, I think I'm ready. Let, let's just go. They could have actually put a mini display port back there. You could have kept the additional USB-A port. How many of you out there actually use the micro SD card slot consistently? And don't lie. Now, I have my camera that I use to record these videos, but instead of going in and taking the SD card out, putting it in an adapter, and then, uh, or taking it out the adapter and slapping it in my computer and doing all that, I just hook my camera up to my computer or this laptop via a USB-A port that I don't have now because my mouse is taking it up. I don't think I'm nitpicking or complaining, so it is what it is. I just want what I pay for, which, you, which obviously what looks like you took away. You know, it is what it is. I paid for you not to take things away, to not take things away. Picture this, and I'm gonna end it on this. When you upgrade a product, Alienware, you add or enhance what was already there. Wow, wow. That's all I'm saying. Usa. Next, unlike, unfortunate, is the heat. And right now, I'll let you guys see uh, what it what it heats up to when I do the uh, the actual gaming performance you know, the practical application. But I'm just talking, right now I'm just talking about external heat, which pretty much reflects internal heat. When normal gaming, I'm not, I'm not even talking stress testing this thing or anything. I was just normal gaming for like 30 minutes to 45 minutes. The top here and the sides get hot, especially up here at the top. Now, if you look at the overall construction or the new construction, a new design of the cooling in the inside, the four fans, two on each side, are on each side of the keyboard, where it channels that heat to come up through these vents. Um, and you can feel it. You can literally, you can feel it. The keyboard itself gets mildly warm, so it won't disrupt, disrupt your gaming. Um, because it didn't disrupt mine. I barely felt any heat on the keys. It was mildly warm. But I'm concerned about this piece up here, because I could not keep my finger there for more than 10 seconds before I had to take it off. Um, yeah, do I touch this on a regular? No, but when I'm testing these computers, I want to know what the deck feels like. I want to know how hot this thing gets, because again, without me going and opening up MSI Afterburner and actually seeing the heat, I want to feel it first before I know the actual temperature. Ain't that how we test things anyway? Hey, is that thing warm? You're not going to immediately go get a thermometer. You're going to go, oh yeah, it's hot, then go get the thermometer. It is what it is. Up here is where the CPU is, and man, you can feel it. I'm pretty sure I can put a slice of thin bacon here, uh, and it'll turn brown after a few gaming sessions, but just have honeycomb grill marks. I might try that. I'm just playing, I gotta take this thing back. And my last unfortunate is the upgradability. Why do you keep playing without motions, Alienware? If this is your top of the line, and I'm calling it the top of the line, that's the way they 
advertised it, commercials all over the damn place. Um, if this is your top of the line, do top of the line things with your product. Allow me to upgrade this and not have to pay more to get the X17, a size I may not even want to be able to upgrade my RAM. They just threw us a nugget and allowed the Wi-Fi card to be upgraded, but then shafted us, or what did what, they say on, um, on uh, Lethal Weapon? They f you in the drive-thru. They f us in the drive-thru uh, by now not allowing the RAM upgrade. Stop playing with my emotions, Smokey. Here's an idea. Make them the same, but just make them smaller like you did last year. You're welcome. I'm going to look for my royalties for that idea. Y'all can hire me to your design a decision team. It's so easy that even a caveman can do it. Why make our choices harder? I may not have the space or capacity to lug around a 17 inch laptop, but now I might because I want to be able to upgrade as my needs change and not overpay you for the RAM. But they knew what they were doing and it's all about the Benjamins at the end of the day and I get it. All of these companies, all of this equipment I got in here is all about the Benjamins. So it is what it is. I said it. I said it. Now before I move on, let me speak on what everyone asked me about that I pretty much don't care about but I do understand your needs and that's battery life and the fans. Battery life is average for a 15.6 inch gaming laptop. It's just average. It won't last you uh, long on battery even with Advanced Optimus. Typing this review got me about three hours off and on, um, but I was on max brightness the whole time and we know this thing is not super bright, so it is what it is. I did no gaming, no video streaming, no web surfing, only using Microsoft Word and squeezed in over three, three and a half hours max until I was running to get the you know, non-angled power cable. Uh, in my opinion, unless Tesla starts manufacturing batteries for technology or battery technology and laptops, I don't think we're gonna get any better moving forward or you know, processors or graphics cards become exponentially better or more efficient. We're not gonna get any better. These machines demand power and when on battery, it drains fast as hell. It is what it is. You know, so don't expect long battery life. I get a lot of questions in the comments on some of my earlier reviews about, oh, could I, how long could I watch Netflix? I don't fucking know. I'm not gonna sit here and watch Netflix for eight hours trying to see how long it lasts. I just know on Microsoft Word, it only lasts three and a half hours. So go figure how long it will last if I was watching Netflix. And it is what it is. I get it. Everybody got questions and there's no such thing as a dumb question. So ask them, but I'm not going to answer just any old question, you know. They have to, you know, apply to my usage. Now, somebody else may chime in and answer your question who actually tested this in that capacity, but I don't and I don't intend to. I don't have that, time, that kind of time for Netflix anyway. And fan noise. To be honest, they're about the same as on the R3 or M15 R3 and M15 R4. They get loud. It's no secret. Alienware don't give a bloop. I've said it before. Alienware fans are probably or close or probably the loudest or close to the loudest on the market. And we all know since it hasn't changed, they don't even care. The fans have to keep the thing cool. That keeps the thing alive. It is what it is. If the fans weren't doing what they were supposed to do, I could only imagine how hot this thing would get. Because normally. Uh, I, I, anytime I play it, I put it on max and these fans get loud and I'm going to let you hear them right now. And re remember, this time we have four fans. So I can feel some air coming out of here. Right? There is a tinge of a high pitched sound to them, but you really have to be listening for them, right, in order for that to happen. And I just kicked it up a notch. But this is about as loud as they get. So when you're hard gaming and you have it on uh, extreme performance, this is what you'll get. I had to actually wait till this thing calmed down before I could start recording again. Uh, it is what it is. But Anyway, to sum it all up, in short, or BLUF, bottom line up front, battery life is short and the fans are loud. It is what it is. 
but I don't mind either of those because I know why I purchased this machine. But let's just hope it performs for the reason I purchased this machine. It's a good segue. Now on to the performance. Now looking at the Time Spy Extreme, ex Time Spy, I always mess that up. Looking at the Time Spy Extreme results, which is a 4K gaming performance test, because I like to stress these things out, right? You can see that the Alienware X15 R1 falls just below the Alienware M15 R5, which had a R9 or a Ryzen 9 and a 3070 at 125 watts. Hmm. Got crushed. Well, not crushed, but got beat by, also got beat by the M15 R4. Hmm. 4872 for the R1, 4882 for the R5, 5131 for the M15 R4. Hmm. And don't even think about matching this thing up to the Legion 5 Pro. Moving on to the ray tracing test, again, the, M, the X15 R1 falls just above the R5, but I would call it even because it's you know, pretty much less than 30 points. Let's just call them points. 30 points difference between the two, right? Again, beat by the M15 R4 and don't even match it up to the M15 or the Legion 5 Pro or the M15 R4, but I'm not going to really compare it to that M15 R4 with a 3080, even though that M15 R4 with a 3080 that you see on your screen that I'm matching it up against costs the exact same price as this one, but with a 4K display. But it would have been even cheaper with a 1080p display because I bought it in the Dell Outlet. And I shouldn't be saying that shit because every time I do, you guys probably go to Dell Outlet and buy shit and I don't get no kickback. I ain't hating though. I ain't hating. Moving on to the Shadow of the Tomb Raider, which is a real world application because we all know that these, synthet these synthetic tests only create a baseline so you can match it up to its counterparts. But in actual performance, if you can see, there's really not a big difference, right? Uh, comparing it to the M15 R4, if you can look and see that the X15 R1 actually beats it with RTX on and pretty much even with it, with a difference of seven frames per second with RTX off, but if you look at what I ran a test for the M15 R4 at, I ran it at 1600p. So this is the M15 R4 with the 3070 in it with the 125 watt graphics card. You can see that if I would have ran it at 1080p, it probably would have gave you probably about 30% more frames. So I would say that it, di it didn't actually beat the M15 R4. And it actually was even up with the M15 R5, or even with the M15 R5 with RTX on, and with RTX off, obviously there was a 19 to 20% um, frames per second difference running at 1080p. Now, um, as you can see in practical application, in compare to it, there was a little bit, there was, there was a little bit more disparity uh, between the two. It is what it is. Uh, your mileage may vary. It depends on how you run your games. Anytime I run these Shadow of the Tomb Raider tests, I always run them on ultra settings and then all the only thing I change is RTX on and then RTX off. That's it. I also added another real world test just for this because I just wanted to see what it can do because if I kept this I probably would keep this in my bedroom on my desk so I can hook it up to my um, my LG CX 48 inch that I have in there now uh, so I can game on it and I did. The results were not what I desired, you know, um, it's not what I wanted. So I connected it to up to my, uh, my LG CX 48 and it was able to maintain 30 to 45 frames, frames per second at max settings with RTX off, which for this particular genre is acceptable, but for anything else, like any shooters, it's going to be a no for me, dog. So again, the 3070 Max-Q is really strangling this laptop. And it, again, it could be a great performer, but I think, they, I think they dogged us when they didn't put the max power in here. It, it, there's no way around it. There's no way around it. Anyway, moving on to my recommendation. So, it is what it is. And that's pretty much my favorite saying. Overall, do I recommend the Alienware X15 R1 with the 3070 Max-Q? And I said that on purpose, just, so, just to remind you, 
like I haven't said it before. And let me start by saying this. It's a great computer, great laptop. I love the design. I love the build. I love the lighting. I love the brand in general. I love the, the icon or whatever you want to call it, the Alienware head. Um, but like Alienware, uh, it's because it's an Alienware, I have to pay the cost or the high cost of admission. I have to pay premium for a premium brand. But Alienware, if I have to do that, at least give me premium specs. Give me those extra ports. Give me a higher power 3070, even if you have to make it a little bit thicker. Uh, give me those things that other manufacturers can't afford or won't do because it'll cut into their profits. Plus, by doing that and I'm buying this, it'll separate me from the crowd when I whip this thing out of my bag like a blade uh, and let folks know, put them on notice that I paid premium to get a premium performing product that's going to outperform anything they have just by the look of it because they probably looked it up and they probably can't afford it. Uh, and I'll echo with that, I'll echo my thoughts from my Razor Blade 14 review to say that it's a great laptop, but just not at this cost. Look at the performance and look at the cost difference between those that it, it competed against. It is, I, I hate to say it, right? Because I really wanted this to perform better. Should I get the 3080? I probably should have, but now I'm out $3,000 and that just ain't going to happen. For $3,000, I can go get an MSI with a, with a 140 watt or the Lenovo Legion 5 Pro uh, uh, with, a, with a higher performing 3070 with the 140 watt that'll you know, smoke this thing. Just being real with y'all, you know, uh, I don't think I'm being cheeky by asking for all of that. Give me those things so I can be proud of the machine that I bought. Some folks been waiting weeks or even months for theirs when they could have gotten the same or better performance from their local Best Buy or local store if you're not in the United States. To sum it all up, I'll say this. Having this laptop is like having a Kardashian. It looks good and it sure feels good has great potential, but it runs hot, don't work, and probably ain't good enough for you. Are we still talking about the X15? Thanks for watching, folks. This your boy, DT2.0. Until next time, peace. Hit me in the comments if you got anything else to say if you guys want to debate about stuff, because that's what we do, right? It is what it is. Deuces.